Welcome to the gaming news of the week. In this week's news, Bloodborne Cart is still in the race but is now called Nightmare Cart. Nightmare Cart, formerly known as Bloodborne Cart, now officially has a release date as the first and only Bloodborne racing game. The game is being created by Lilith Walter, the mind behind the Bloodborne D-Make that downgraded Bloodborne's graphics to create a PlayStation 1 style version of the game. Walter's racing game Bloodborne Cart also has a reminiscent PS1 aesthetic, but Sony, owners of the Bloodborne intellectual property, halted development by requesting the removal of the game's branding. But not all hope is lost, as Bloodborne Cart will retain its aesthetic and gameplay design under a different name, Nightmare Cart. Despite the name change, Nightmare Cart is still spiritually a continuation of the Bloodborne PS1 remake Walther released in 2022. As for Bloodborne itself, a sequel or possible remake seems farther away than ever, as even Hidetaka Miyazaki states that From Software simply does not own the intellectual property. So, even if Nightmare Cart is ultimately legally distinct, it's a nice gift for fans who have been waiting for nearly a decade for a follow-up. The game will feature at least 20 racers inspired by Victorian Gothic imagery along with 16 maps distinct enough from Bloodborne to avoid any legal issues with the Japanese company. Nightmare Cart will be available completely for free on Steam starting from May 31st, so if it sounds interesting to you, keep a lookout on that day. Next up, some news about Pathfinder Gallowspire Survivors. It launched into early access this week in version 1.0, pulling a roguelike twist of survival on the classic RPG. It's available right now with a 40% launch discount, and it adds a bunch of new options, add-ons, and Steam Deck support all in one package. The version 1.0 changes add many new weapons in the war against the growing power of an evil lich. Additionally, a new sprint mechanic has been added to escape damage in the blink of an eye, and a potion belt has been added. They also added dedicated chapters, permanent updates through a card system, compatibility with Steam Remote Play, and faster character progression. If you're a fan of Vampire Survivors or the Pathfinder RPG series from Alcat, then this action-packed dungeon crawler is probably right up your alley. If you purchase it right now on launch, you can get it for $6.99 or your local equivalent thanks to the discount. Next, we have some pretty mind-blowing news from Hollow Knight Silksong suddenly appearing on the Xbox Store. The Hollow Knight sequel being developed by Team Cherry was supposed to have been released sometime during the past year 2023, but was ultimately delayed. As of today, we still have had no signs of a release date, however we did see a significant change on the Xbox Store this week as we can now see a whole new page for Hollow Knight Silksong on the Xbox Store and the rest of the platform stores where it will be available. Hilariously, the page actually went public on April Fool's Day, so many actually doubted the legitimacy of the new information at first, given how long it has been since the last update from Team Cherry. The page itself is still clearly in a very early state. As expected, there's no pre-order option on the page, and there's no new information on what to expect or when the game will be released. However, the fact that Team Cherry has opened the page on each of the stores where the game will be released indicates that something may be revealed sooner rather than later. For now, we will just have to keep waiting. Surely it will pay off. Right? Next on the news, we have the first big Enshrouded update. Keen Games, the creators of Enshrouded, have launched the first major update, Hollow Halls. The update adds new dungeons, a new enemy faction, rewards, a new crafting station, performance improvements, UI enhancements, and much more. It's the first major content update since the game launched, and it covers a significant number of features that were planned on the game's extensive roadmap for 2024. The most important part of the update is undoubtedly the Hollow Halls. These new dungeons can be found in every biome and will challenge even the most seasoned players with their difficulty. Additionally, in this new dungeon, players can also recruit a new NPC for their base. From Keen Games' perspective, they say this update tests players, and the studio recommends preparing well. It's possible to complete the dungeon alone, but it will be very difficult. We recommend bringing a friend. If you collaborate with strangers, remember you can create a copy of your saved files. Next, we have some more news about layoffs. The bad news in the video game industry continues to be prevalent, with Ubisoft being the latest to lay off 45 employees from its workforce. I feel like right now, every week we have to report some kind of layoff happening. In 2023, the total number of people who lost their jobs due to internal restructuring reached 10,500. This year, during only the first four months of 2024, we have already exceeded 8,000 workers, so we could be looking at double the layoffs we saw in 2023 by the end of the year. These 45 individuals are not the only ones affected, as a few months ago, the company laid off another 150 workers to reorganize its operations. Some time ago, we showed how some experts in this industry predicted that if 2023 was the year of layoffs, 2024 would be the year of closures. We'll see how accurate they are, but for now, the number of people who have lost their jobs seems poised to surpass that of 2023. We'll see what happens in the coming months, but if it doesn't stabilize, there will be really tough times ahead for some of the workers in the video game industry. Next, we have news about Dragon's Dogma 2. Capcom has announced that Dragon's Dogma 2 has already surpassed 2.5 million copies sold worldwide since its release on March 22nd. 
Furthermore, reports indicate that the title has sold exceptionally well in the United Kingdom and Japan. In the UK, it has been hailed as the best-selling launch of the year. On the other hand, in Japan, it ranked second in sales during its first week. The franchise's cumulative sales, including their original game and the Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen Edition, have exceeded 10 million units thanks to the sequel's significant impact. It's an immersive game where we've personally spent a bunch of hours. We still discover new surprises as we create new builds for our guides and utilize the unique abilities of each vocation. Undoubtedly, this title will keep you occupied and provide many hours of enjoyable gameplay. Additionally, patches have already been released for the PC version to address some fixes, but the company has acknowledged that there are more improvements to be made that will be added in the future. Next we have some news from a game you probably haven't heard from in a while, New World. The Amazon Games team have announced the debut of the fifth season, titled Season of the Guardian. In this new season, players can discover the conclusion of the main story mission along with various limited time seasonal events such as Spring Blossom and Rabbit Revenge. Additionally, those who have acquired the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion will have some additional content, one of which is the Season Trial, where skilled players can join up to 10 maximum level players to solve runic puzzles, defeat an ice construct, and more to receive exclusive rewards. They also receive 8 new artifacts that can be obtained throughout the season to redefine your playstyle. As for everyone else, all New World players will be able to participate in new events and seasonal opportunities. There will be a new season pass featuring a new season journey alongside a new activity card, challenges, and rewards that include cosmetics and consumables. Another event being added is Rabbit Revenge. The Rabbit Plague has returned once again to New World, and is more dangerous than ever. If you help to eradicate the plague, you can earn some unique event rewards. There is also newfound gamepad support. Additionally, players will soon be able to return to Spring Blossom, starting on April 10th, as Awakening Time returns once more, calling its children to share an ancient secret capable of granting true freedom. Players can help Bloom Herald uncover the mysteries of the ethereal Wispy Bloom, and of course, unlock the Springtide seasonal rewards. Next on the news, we have some updates for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. According to Saber Interactive, the Star Wars KOTOR remake is still alive, although its development is going to take a while. Announced in 2021 for PS5 and PC, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake made headlines as one of the most anticipated titles in gaming. However, the recent news about the state of the game has not been very positive, with many rumors circulating that the game has been cancelled. However, Saber Interactive, creators of the KOTOR remake, have spoken with IGN after leaving Embracer Group to become a private company. The CEO of the company wanted to reassure any anxious fans that the remake is alive and under development. Matthew Karch has assured that Saber Interactive has taken KOTOR with them in their separation from Embracer and that they continue to work on the project. In his words, It's clear and obvious that we are working on this. It has appeared in the press numerous times. What I will say is that the game is alive and kicking, and we are dedicated to ensuring that we exceed consumer expectations. So everyone relax, one of George Lucas's most anticipated projects still remains. Before the Star Wars KOTOR remake, another highly anticipated project Star Wars Outlaws will arrive so you can scratch that Star Wars itch this year. Next up we have some news about Capcom's latest game poll. Capcom currently has successful titles on PC, Steam Deck, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch, but there are fans who miss their retro throwbacks in Capcom's history, such as Dino Crisis. Last month, Capcom launched a survey asking users if they would like to see new installments, remakes, or reboots of sagas like Dino Crisis, Okami, Dead Rising, or any other Capcom titles. The Jurassic creatures managed to overshadow the rest of Capcom's arsenal, as you can see in the Twitter posts showing a jumble of words representing some of the most mentioned names in the survey. However, as seen in the second image, other Capcom games such as Mega Man, Darkstalkers, Ace Attorney, Onimusha, Veronica, and Breath of Fire can be seen. Meanwhile, successful and active franchises like Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, and Devil May Cry also had quite a few mentions. As you can expect, this probably doesn't mean that Capcom has the remake of Dino Crisis in development or are thinking about announcing it. But for any Dino Crisis fans, perhaps you can start to get a little bit excited. And for any other Devil May Cry fans out there, I'm praying with you. Next up we have some news about Elder Scrolls 6. For the Elder Scrolls 30th anniversary celebration, one of the most important sagas in video game history, Bethesda shared some brief details about the development of the new installment of the franchise, The Elder Scrolls 6. Bethesda referred to the development of The Elder Scrolls VI as a part of the post made on their Twitter account, commemorating the 30th anniversary of The Elder Scrolls. In the last paragraph of their post, Bethesda stated, Even now, returning to Tamriel and playing the early versions of the game fills us with the same joy, excitement, and promise of adventure. There are still no certainties about when the new game for Bethesda's saga could arrive, 
and it was clear from the message that the company is still far from being able to determine a specific date. Since its announcement in 2018, it has been believed that The Elder Scrolls 6 could hit the market for PC and Xbox exclusively. However, Microsoft has been preparing the arrival of its exclusive games on PlayStation and Nintendo platforms. This includes titles such as Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, Starfield, Hellblade 2, Halo, and Gears of War. With the change of direction Xbox seems to have taken regarding its exclusive licenses, the possibility of having an SO6 on Sony's current generation console is more open than ever, so PlayStation fans may still be able to enjoy the title. So that's about it for this week's news. If you're interested in supporting the channel, be sure to leave a comment, let us know what you think about all the news, and check out our VIP subscription on the website for some exclusive supporter benefits. We will be seeing you next week.